In order to be able to enforce a law, obviously a police officer needs to know what constitutes a crime. And that seems like an obvious response, but every situation that you respond to is going to be different. So it's imperative that you're able to choose the applicable laws in those situations. Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you were having a fantastic weekend so far. Or it might be Monday. I'm not sure when I'm going to release this video yet. Now that we have discussed things like report writing in the Constitution, let's move forward with the educational process of the Police Academy. Welcome to an introduction into criminal law. Obviously, as a cop, it's important to know what the laws are, but just as, if not more importantly, knowing where they come from and why they are in place. Knowing what the law is as opposed to why the law is can often be the difference in being just an enforcer or being a law enforcement officer. And yes, there is a difference. Our purpose is not to punish the public. Our purpose is to help others and educate people and work with the community to achieve a safer environment for everybody. If you only see yourself as an enforcer or if the community only sees you as an enforcer, there is going to be a divide that is created inevitably. We need to get away from this mindset. And a lot of people ask me, do you think that community policing has gone too far? And the answer to that is kind of complicated. Honestly, my immediate response would be no, but I do think it's gone in a weird direction. Case in point, and this is just my opinion, I'm not saying I'm right, so don't take it as absolute truth. Take it with a grain of salt. But remember that craze that was going across the nation where all these police departments were doing lip sync videos? Yeah. Sorry, I think that was goofy. But all that aside, if you're watching this video, either you are going through the hiring process or you're going through the academy right now, or maybe you just wanna know what this guy with a beard and the thumbnail wants to talk about. One of the first things you need to remember when you are going into law enforcement is you are never going to be successful without working with the community. After all, the community acknowledging and respecting your authority is literally what gives you your authority. So once you have that mindset that you want the trust from the community and you are willing to work with the community, you can then proceed forward. It's about seeing the bigger picture. One of the first concepts that are taught in any type of criminal law class is the difference between constitutional law, statutory law, and case law. Now, I've already talked about case law in a previous video, so we are not gonna be covering that in this one. Remember that constitutional law is the top dog. It's the final say at the end of the day. I should have been a rapper, <laughs> Lil 401. Now, remember that statutory law is inferior to constitutional law, which means that a statute can't conflict or attempt to supersede constitutional rights. If a con conflict exists between the two, then the courts need to figure that out. Remember that statutory laws are very narrow and specific, whereas constitutional laws are a little bit more vague and open to interpretation. Statutory law is passed by the Congress or by state legislators, and constitutional amendments require a lot more elaborate, drawn out process. The next important thing to remember when you are studying criminal law is the difference between civil law and criminal law. Criminal law is simply the laws of crimes and punishments, whereas civil law is laws of civil or private rights. To put it simply, civil law is basically trying to solve a dispute between one entity or another. Criminal law, on the other hand, deals with an individual's crimes against the state or government. And it might sound literal, you might take that in a literal sense, as if somebody committed a crime on a government official, but that's not really what it, that means. It means they committed a crime that the government put in place. An example would be someone commits a physical assault on another person. I am the officer, the government entity investigating the case, and I am the one that puts the primary aggressor in jail. It is now them versus the state. But what exactly changes between the two, between civil law and criminal law? But what exactly changes between the two, civil law and criminal law? Well, things like punishments, burden of proof, meaning which side has the responsibility of proving the violation. Statutes of limitation, meaning how long can this violation be punishable? That's right, a lot of violations can actually expire after a period of time. Who initiates a case? And also the appeals process. Now some actual examples of the differences between civil law and criminal law. Examples of civil law would be things like bankruptcy, or child custody disputes, or defamation of character. Whereas criminal law would be things like homicide, assault, theft, things like that. Another important aspect to take into account when you are determining who might be at fault is whether it was criminal intent or criminal negligence. 
Did the criminal intend to commit this crime or was it done because they maybe weren't paying attention? The next thing you need to know is to be able to define the difference between a felony, a misdemeanor, and say an infraction, which could be called different things in different states. Infractions can be things like traffic tickets or ordinance violations. And under federal law, basically a misdemeanor is any crime that carries a jail sentence that's under one year. Last but not least, felonies. Felonies are the worst in the criminal justice system. Most states, 43 in all, actually define a felony by either one of two things, where the person is incarcerated or how long the incarceration is, sometimes both. Georgia defines a felony by a crime that is either punishable by death, punishable by life imprisonment, or punishable by imprisonment more than one year. And as you go through an actual criminal law class, things will break down and get a lot more detailed than I'm able to in an under 10 minute video. The whole point of this video was to basically give you guys a rough outline of the kinds of things you're gonna be learning as you progress forward in your criminal law class. There is a lot to all this stuff, uh, there's a lot of like technicalities and stuff, but it's not rocket science. It's really just a matter of memorization and being able to properly apply what you've learned. As long as you can do those two things, you have this down. As long as you know how to uh, properly interpret the law and be able to apply it as a law enforcement officer on any given call, you're fine. You're good to go. And there might be times down the road, 10 years into your job, where there's a law you don't remember and you're having to crack open your code book or search Google because you don't remember the exact law that should be applied in this particular situation because it's not something you deal with on a daily basis. So don't expect yourself to memorize every single criminal code that is in the code book. That's not really your job. Your job is to know what they are and have a general sense of their purpose and be able to properly apply them while you're on a scene. Anyway guys, that was a quick and dirty video, a quick intro into criminal law. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Trust me, I know this topic is not exactly uh, riveting by any stretch of the imagination, but it is something that you have to know when you are doing your job. Otherwise, you're gonna end up in some hot water. So even the dry stuff, the boring stuff, guys, if you are in the academy right now, pay attention to the instructors. I promise you everything that you are learning right now is going to benefit you down the road. I'm not saying you have to do things exactly like the police academy does does because they will change once you get on the road uh, but the basic concepts of things are gonna stay the same so it's important that you try to soak those things up like a sponge keep them in your mind and move forward with your career either way guys thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend and I will see you guys very very soon